So hey guys. This is your favorite fiction domain. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto become a real monster with summoner power. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. Between meeting the Kyuubi face to face, digging up the courage to yell at it and demand its chakra, and being a little freaked out when he finally got it, Naruto had kind of forgotten the exact direness of his current situation. Falling to certain death if he didn't summon a fucking toad. He began running through the hand signs for the summoning jutsu as he fell further and further into the ravine, pouring demonic chakra into it. Please don't be a tadpole. Please don't be a tadpole. Please don't be a fucking tadpole. He mentally prayed as he finished the jutsu, summoning jutsu. He yelled before being engulfed in a cloud of smoke. The next thing Naruto knew was that he was standing on something hard, followed by the noise of rocks breaking and cracking off the wall as whatever he summoned stopped its descent. Wow, I think I actually did it that time. Naruto cheered as the smoke started to clear, blinking as he looked down at the rough, dark blue scales he was standing on. Huh? Do toads have scales like this? He asked curiously as he knelt down to examine them. They weren't smooth or leathery like he was expecting. They were keeled scales, rough with ridges. Getting a bit nervous, Naruto stood up and looked around, trying to get a better look at this thing. He slowly paled as the smoke cleared. This is not a toad, he said slowly as he realized several things. One was that this creature had no arms or legs that he could see. It was keeping itself up by keeping its long body zigzagged and stiff, the turns of its body pressed against the walls. This also brought Naruto to his second realization. This thing, whatever it was, was long as hell. Its body zigzagged between the canyon walls many times, stretching back for what looked like a mile, at least, before fading out of view. Naruto slowly looked over the edge and gulped. Not at the height, mind you, but at the fact that he could see the tail going down into the blackness and he still couldn't see the end of the tail. Feeling the giant muscles twitch and move a bit under him, Naruto quickly got back up on his feet and looked towards where he believed was the front of the creature. It only zigzagged against the walls a few times this way before tipping downwards, out of view. Um, hey, can you hear me, giant snake thing? Naruto called, feeling as lame as he sounded for saying that. All at once, the front of the beast began to move upward, its craned down head out of view as it adjusted itself in the relatively narrow space. Towering Naruto, it slowly turned its head, making Naruto almost step back in shock. It had horns. It could have been two or more, because they were covered in sharp coral and rocks, looking almost like a crown with a gap down the middle. Its jaw was long, with two pronounced lines leading towards the nostrils, ending in an almost hook-like fashion. From said nose, thick smoke billowed, flames flaring when it breathed through them. Its mouth was filled with teeth that were several feet long each. But its eyes were perhaps the most intimidating sight. They glowed with an unearthly light, like two suns rising over the morning dawn. Naruto couldn't even make out any eye color behind those lights. While a snake couldn't blink, this one seemed to gain a surprised and confused look before a vertical, semi-transparent lens slid over and covered the eyes, giving it a milky appearance, but also showing that the creature had golden whites, and slit pupils in its neon green eyes. Naruto and the serpent stared at each other for the longest time before one of them got either too curious or too annoyed, am I Ata? The serpent said, tilting his or at least it sounded male enormous head questioningly. Huh? Naruto said in confusion, not understanding what that word was, if it even was a word. Poyos Isai? The giant tried, saying it a bit more slowly this time. I, I don't understand. Naruto tried again. The snake's head perked up for a moment as if trying to think on something before gaining a new look of hopefulness. Nisha Shishai? He asked. What language are you even speaking? Naruto yelled, getting a bit frustrated. Well forgive me for not expecting to show up so suddenly in your lands, you little shit stain. It's not like I can recognize Japanese from every other language off the tip of my tail. The snake yelled back, shaking the walls and making Naruto fall backwards clutching his nose. Oh, God's the smell, snake. Your breath is lethal, Naruto hollered through his jumpsuit, using it to cover his nose as he rolled on the back of the enormous beast, who gained a tick mark at that. I am not some garden snake, 
The knot snake retorted in outrage before taking a calming breath, and I'm sorry about the breath. That whale I ate yesterday is leaving a worse odor than normal, he said in annoyance at his oral health issue. Naruto took a few moments to fill his lungs with fresh air, as sorry about that, and yelling at you. What were you saying? Naruto asked, trying to be somewhat civil with the giant, serpent, great. Not only do I meet a giant fox with anger issues today, but I also meet a giant snake with identity issues. Somehow, I know the Kyubi did this on purpose, he thought in worry. I was trying to ask who you are, human, the scaly creature answered evenly. Naruto Uzumaki, next Hokage, Naruto answered cheekily. Naruto Uzu what? Yahweh, why did I have to get sent to a land that has one of the only language I never got a full grasp on, the beast groaned. Shaking its head in exasperation, speaking of which, how in Jehenna did I get here? He asked curiously. I, well, I was trying to use a summoning jutsu, but for some reason, you showed up, Naruto said sheepishly. Summoning Jud okay, now I think you humans are just making these words up as you go, the creature said in annoyance. How do you not know what a jutsu is? Naruto asked in disbelief. How do you summon something like me by mistake? He responded in kind. I don't know, ask the perverted sage, Naruto answered with a pump. Perverted, sage. Two words that should have never been used together to describe someone, the creature said blankly. With a sigh, so, what, a jutsu is a ritual basically, he asked for clarification. Yeah, kind of, Naruto said with a shrug, by the way, I never got your name? Seriously, you don't have a name for me? The summoned beast asked, sounding oddly surprised. E.H., whatcha mean? Naruto asked curiously. How limbless reptile could do a shrugging motion, Naruto didn't know, but this one pulled it off, every place I go to, everyone already has some legend and name about me, or something like me, he admitted, I just got used to everyone assuming they already knew my name. Naruto shrugged in return, eh, I've heard about lots of giant animals before, but I didn't catch all of their names, he said offhandedly. Hmm, well, my name is Leviathan. Nice to meet you. The now christened Leviathan answered. Nice to meet you too, Leviathan, Naruto greeted with a grin. Um, sorry about summoning you though. Something went wrong, I suppose. That or I overdid it, Naruto apologized with a chuckle. Well, on the upside, at least he doesn't want to eat me. Guess I can't fault a kid that is messing with magic, that's bound to cause a mess, Leviathan muttered to himself, getting a sweat drop from Naruto. But what were you trying to summon anyway and why the Jehenna hasn't my tail found the bottom of this damn canyon? The reptile yelled in disbelief, flaring his flaming nostril in frustration as it looked down for a moment. Yeah, it's pretty deep. Good thing too, or I might have hit the bottom before I summoned you, Naruto said with a grin. I was about to ask if you were getting tired holding yourself up like this anyway, he added on, looking ohe zigzagging body. I've done a lot more strenuous stuff than this, I'm fine for now. Still a bit in climate shock after going from swimming on a nice deep sea current, to what feels like summer in the tropics. Leviathan ranted a bit, panting a bit at the end. You okay? Naruto asked curiously. Yeah, yeah, just give me a second. I haven't been surprised like this in a long time, somehow, I just know that Behemoth and Ziz have something to do with this, he muttered to himself. So, what were you trying to summon? He asked again. Wanting to change the subject. A toad, Naruto answered simply. A toad? Leviathan repeated. Yeah, kept getting tadpoles for the longest times, Naruto answered with a nod. Why? Leviathan asked, scrunching its brow. I don't know, something about not putting enough chakra into the jutsu or something, Naruto explained with a sigh, honestly not really remembering at this point. No, I mean why would you want to summon a toad in the first place? Leviathan asked blankly. What do you mean? Naruto asked. It's a jumping, slimy nuisance you can find in almost any swamp. Why would you need to summon one at all? What would be the point? Leviathan asked in confusion. Well it was supposed to be a giant toad, Naruto answered a bit lamely, kind of seeing the Leviathan's point. Big whoop dee fucking do, you get a giant jumping, slimy nuisance. Seriously, the only thing I can think of that would make a giant toad useful is if it was dropped on top of something or if it was poisonous on the skin, and that would just make almost any situation worse, 
Maybe if you had a giant fly problem, it might be useful. A giant toad is more useless than a giant worm. At least the worm could constrict and dig underground. Of all the beasts to walk the earth, you pick one of the few that has to be the most useless. At least pick something that has fangs, or claws, or something. Redeemable. The Leviathan ranted, his nostrils crackling in irritation. Okay, I get it. I wasn't too fond of the idea either. But the pervy sage only has a toad contract, and I need all the help I can get, Naruto answered, trying to placate the enormous beast. That's the second time you've mentioned this pervy sage, I'm assuming he's a teacher of sorts? Leviathan asked curiously, a bad one by the sounds of it. Yeah, kind of. He's teaching me to summon toads since my other teacher was pretty much useless, Naruto said with a sigh at the thought of Ebisu, and while toads aren't the coolest thing around, they're better than nothing. Still, his teaching methods involve you jumping into the gorge while you were still summoning baby frogs? The great whale eater asked skeptically as he looked at the long way up. Actually, he didn't tell me to do that. He just threw me off it to make me get it right, more or less, after we spent the day trying, Naruto said with a sigh, almost losing his balance as the leviathan stiffened. The serpent slowly looked at Naruto, then back up, then back at Naruto, and back up once more before settling on Naruto, what? It sounds more like he was trying to kill you. Leviathan roared in shock. Wow with the actual shit. You don't put a kid into a do or die situation just because he couldn't get it right in a single day. That's, that's not impatient, that's not bad teaching, that's damn retarded. Not to mention child endangerment. How did your parents ever let you learn from a guy like this? He asked in disbelief. Actually, I'm an orphan, Naruto pointed out awkwardly, having no other way around that question. Kid. I take back every bad thing I said or thought about you up until now. Because that is just, that's just wrong on so. Many levels, taking advantage of a kid without a family to watch his back. Wait, you keep calling him a pervert, is this? Asshole a child molester. Leviathan roared, making towers of flames shoot from his nostrils as his eyes blazed behind the protective lens. No, no nothing like that. I just call him that because he writes pervy books and peeps on women. Naruto assured quickly. Are you sure? Leviathan asked in concern. Ye, well, he did want me to use my sexy jutsu all the time when training with him, but I only had to use it make him focus on training me rather peeping on the girls, Naruto answered uneasily. Sexy jutsu, Leviathan asked in dread. It's, it's a jutsu I use to make me look like a naked sexy girl version of myself, Naruto answered sheepishly. Leviathan went blank face at that, must. Kill, perverted, sage, he thought darkly as he sighed and regained his composure, well, my. Tail found the bottom. I can get us out of here safely, he said offhandedly as his body began to relax against the walls. You may want to grab onto something, he instructed as his body began to straighten out and head upwards. How fucking long are you? Naruto yelled as he crouched down and gripped onto the scaly hind with chakra as Leviathan headed straight upwards, on his own muscle power. Leviathan just chuckled to himself as he rose to the surface. Meanwhile Jiraiya was officially getting a bit worried. He had seen Naruto preform the jutsu and the large cloud of smoke that followed. After hearing the summon stop the very rapid descent it and its summoner were in, he had grinned in pride that his plan had paid off. So, he sat down by a tree and waited for Naruto, and whatever toad he made appear, to jump out of the gorge. But after several long minutes, nothing happened. Not even the sound of something large hitting the bottom or the poof of a large summon dispersing. What hell is taking them so long? Did they decide to have a nice chat in a ravine? He wondered to himself as he stood up and approached the large crack in the ground. Now, Jiraiya admitted to himself, he wasn't sure what demon chakra would do to a summoning jutsu. But in all honesty, the most he was expecting was a fox summon instead of a toad. Or even a demonic toad. A frog would have even been unsurprising, he did not, however, think he would see the head and body of a creature that seemed more fitting for his traitorous teammate to shoot out of the ravine, right as Jiraiya himself reached it, Jiraiya. Jumped back with a gasp he watched the beast rise several dozen feet into the air before coming back down and resting its head on the ledge, hey, Uzu what is it, you climbing up or do I need to do everything for you, Leviathan called, looking back out of the corner of its eye, yeah, yeah, I'm coming, 
Naruto called back in annoyance as he used his chakra to climb up the leviathan's back. If said sea monster had eyes in the back of his head, he might have commented on. Naruto walking up a near vertical ascent the way he was. As it was, he just waited for the human to reach his head. Is there something etched in your horns? Naruto asked in surprise, rubbing away some of the loose coral and rock as he reached it. Oh, yeah, some asshole carved some things on it. Everyone tells me it's all compliments, like how, I am one of the greatest creatures that inhabit the sea. And, I am 300 miles in length. Leviathan answered gruffly, I'm sure there's more than one insult in there and no one wants to tell me, he grumbled. Sorry, but I don't understand whatever langua did you just say you're 300 miles long? Naruto yelled in. Disbelief as that line registered. Jiraiya, still unnoticed by the pair, staggered backwards as he eavesdropped on the conversation. He quickly looked over the edge and found that the body of the leviathan seemed to go on forever and ever. Holy shit. Did Naruto summon a snake god or something? Jiraiya wondered in growing dread. You're right next to my ear hole, you howler monkey. Leviathan roared in anger, and as for how long I am, I have no fucking idea. You think I memorized and grasped your human measuring systems at my size? You could say I was three centimeters and I couldn't refute you in complete certainty? He elaborated, still very annoyed. Geez, geez, okay, Naruto said in verumped off the head, still, if you're anywhere close to that size, you're way too big to have this close to the village. Naruto said, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. Oh please. Leviathan said with a roll of his eyes, his body glowing light as it rapidly shrunk down. In his place, there was a 40-foot version of himself, his body about as thick as an adult human thigh, curled up in front of Naruto into a large cone-shaped pile of flesh. You think I don't know how to change size, kid? Give me some credit, he said, feigning arrogance. Sweet, still, you're going to scare any non-ninja shitless on sight, Naruto warned with a grin. I'm the goddamn Leviathan. I'd be insulted if I didn't scare people, Leviathan reminded with a small glare. Um, not to interrupt this riveting conversation, Jiraiya spoke up tentatively, getting both of their attention. Oh, hey pervy sage, didn't see you there, Naruto greeted over his shoulder. Naruto, how exactly did you sue Ah? Jiraiya screamed as the tail to Leviathan's still seemingly infinite form swung out and tried to grab him. Luckily, being one of the Sanin, Jiraiya was able to dodge it. What the hell was that for? Jiraiya yelled in annoyance as Leviathan leered at him. For being a pedophile, you creep, Leviathan answered scathingly, making Jiraiya face fault. Naruto, what have you been telling him? Jiraiya asked in alarm and dismay at his student. Yeah, Leviathan here doesn't know our language perfectly. I told him about how I had to use the sexy jutsu to get you to help me and I think he misunderstood something along the way, Naruto answered with a sheepish chuckle. Oh, I didn't misunderstand anything, Leviathan retorted tonelessly as his lenses retracted, releasing the unholy lights of his eyes upon the world, and flaring his nostrils for good effect. What the hell is THA? Jiraiya started, only for Leviathan to take advantage of his surprise and slam his tail down on him. Okay, you got that out of your sigh ah. The toad sage hit the ground again so hard this time that he bounced back up and got flicked back down leviathan repeating the process with loud thuds echoing through the air waves going through his tail for each hit um leviathan naruto asked tentatively after several long seconds hoping to make him stop i'm almost done he assured evenly hitting jiraiya for the 30th time leaving the supposedly great ninja lying in a crater as a heap of bruises and cracked bones okay i'm good he said plainly recovering his eyes again. Thanks, I probably might need him for training still, Naruto reminded sheepishly. Training in what? How to be a creep? We've already covered that toads are pointless for summoning, even in giant form. Besides, even if I wasn't sure this guy wasn't a pedo, I'm not about to leave you alone with a guy that throws impressionable kids off cliffs when he gets impatient, Leviathan countered, still very annoyed with those topics. But without him, how am I supposed to train? Naruto pointed out, I don't exactly have a lot of options and teachers here. Naruto, I will teach you ancient arcane rituals long before I leave you alone with him, Leviathan said evenly. You know a jutsu? Naruto asked in surprise. I've been around since before mankind existed, 
I picked up on a few things, Leviathan said flatly. Wow, you're old, Naruto quipped with a chuckle. Tell a goldfish that you're over 10 years old, and it'll say the same thing, Leviathan countered gruffly. So, are you going to disperse soon? Naruto asked curiously. Disperse? Leviathan asked blankly. Um, yeah. The pervy sage said that after so long, the summon goes back where it came from. Naruto explained with a shrug. Have no idea how to do that, don't really want to either, Leviathan said after a moment of thought. Besides, I may not know measuring systems, but I do know I can swim around the world and be back in a week, assuming I don't get a little lost, he pointed out. Don't you want to go home? Naruto asked curiously. Nah, the only ones that'll probably miss me are Ziz and Behemoth, and they probably won't notice I'm gone for a long while. And a century or two vacation could do me good. Leviathan answered easily, rubbing his head with his tail. Okay, well, I think the pervert is going to be useless for the rest of today. After that beating you gave him, Naruto stated awkwardly, I guess we head home. You think you can shrink down again? Naruto asked, looking over at the horned sea monster, only to find he had already shrunk into the size of garden snake. A really long one, but still just as thin. Will this do? Leviathan asked with an incredibly high-pitched, squeaky voice. Naruto just stared down at him for a moment, taking in the image. What? Leviathan asked cluelessly. BW haha, Naruto hollered, rolling on the ground, clutching his stomach, your voice, he tried to get out between laughs. Huh? What about my voice? Leviathan asked in confusion. Do I have something stuck in my throat? Did something not shrink down with me? You, you sound like a goddamn chipmunk, Naruto roared with laughter. Screw you, Uzu, and what the fuck does a chipmunk have to do with my voice? Leviathan protested, his voice even higher. When yelling, making Naruto laugh even harder, stop laughing or I'll burp my toxic breathe on you. Leviathan yelled in warning, fumes coming from his mouth ominously, still not getting. What was so funny? Okay, okay, I'll stop. Naruto said in surrender, getting a few giggles out of his system. Leviathan just huffed as he slithered up Naruto's arm sleeve, curling loosing around his neck under the high collar. Try not to squeeze, Naruto requested, blinking as he felt Leviathan go very lax on him. Hmm, must be a fast sleeper, he mused before heading home. Meanwhile Kurama, aka the nine-tailed fox, watched the meeting between Naruto and the Leviathan with a sweat drop of his own. Who and what the Makai did we summon? He asked in confusion before. Shrugging, oh well, at least I don't have to worry about the brat dying on me anytime soon. Huh. I wonder what would pop up the next time he tries to summon with my chakra, he said, rubbing his chin in thought before shrugging and going back to sleep. Slowly and carefully, the sleeping and miniature Leviathan was guided across a table, a hand holding him gently around the neck. The serpentine monster grumbled in his sleep oblivious to the world around him. After a moment of hesitation, the hand proceeded to dunk the head into a ceramic cup. Now, Leviathan was the primordial king of the seas. He was used to being submerged and sleeping in water, to have liquid filling his body. However, this was not seawater or even fresh water, this was coffee. Sorry, but we couldn't wake you up and they really want a word with you, Naruto answered looking between Leviathan and Sarutobi a bit awkwardly. Said horned serpent turned around to look at the Hokage and the toad sage for a moment, still a bit groggy. So, you are Levi, Sarutobi started, only to get a tail wagging in his face. Yeah, yeah, give me a minute, Leviathan said dismissively, turning back to Naruto with an annoyed look. Seriously though, why did you jump straight to that? Leviathan asked curiously, pointing to the coffee with his tail. I spent a whole hour trying to wake you up. I even tried smacking you, with the handle end of a kanai. Naruto defended strongly. You hit me with a what? Leviathan asked loudly in surprise. You don't even know what a kanai is, do you? Naruto asked suspiciously. Your horns? I could use those things as a can opener? Naruto yelled back. You didn't, Leviathan said accusingly. Not yet, but next time you're a pain to wake up. I just might. Naruto answered with a glare. Did you even try smelling salts, or any smells at all? Leviathan asked in aggravation. I am not putting my hands anywhere near the flamethrower you call your nose, Naruto said blandly. 
and yet you are willing to grab me by the neck and do a cup of. Leviathan paused to sniff the drink, blinking as he took a lick of it, what is this stuff? he asked curiously. Coffee, Naruto answered simply, raising an eyebrow as Leviathan used his tail to grasp the cup by the handle and drink it. Seriously? Naruto asked with a sweat drop. I honestly want to swim in this stuff now, Leviathan said with a buzzed chuckle. Sarutobi, watching the exchange curiously, cleared his throat to get attention back on him. The demon container and the whale eater turned to look at the aged human. Oh, right, who are you again? Leviathan asked blankly making the Hokage and Jiraiya face fault. As I was saying, I'm here as in Sarutobi, the Sandiami Hokage, here as an introduced. And I'm Leviathan, king of fish, Leviathan retorted evenly, clearly unimpressed. Now, what is so important that the kid had to experiment in various ways how to wake me up? He asked directly. My former student here, here as in started, motioning to Jiraiya, prompting Leviathan to interrupt. Oh great, you again. Don't you have other kids to try and take advantage of? Or are you the type to go after the same one until you get them? He asked in annoyance, glaring up at the summoner of jumping nuisances. Jiraiya, what does he mean by that? Saru Tobi asked blankly. You don't know? Leviathan asked, tilting his head curiously before Jiraiya could get a word in edgewise. Know what? The Hokage questioned with a raised eyebrow. Sensei, don't listen to him. He's a lying snake. Jiraiya tried to intervene, perhaps a bit too quickly. That your student here is a child abuser, and very likely a pedophile, Leviathan answered undauntedly, further annoyed by the, snake, comment. Do you have any proof of this? Sarutobi asked with a raised eyebrow, Jiraiya gapping at him in disbelief. Naruto warned me that your grasp of our language isn't perfect. He threw Uzu here into a ravine, and trust me, if he didn't summon me or something else, the kid would have been an orange smear in a deep dark pit. Leviathan countered with a glare, calmly turning to Naruto. No offense, he offered, before returning to glaring at the adults. None taken, Naruto said with a shrug, watching the scene play out in front of him curiously. He did what? Sarutobi asked with wide eyes, before shaking his head and rounding on the toad sage. You did what? He yelled in shock. You did the same thing to me. Jiraiya countered holding his hands up in defense. I threw you off a waterfall over deep water, Saru Tobi retorted hotly. Yeah, but the genjutsu made it look like I was heading towards ragged rocks, Jiraiya pointed out. Yes, and I explained that it was a genjutsu to you immediately afterwards, the god of shinobi rebutted. I had to improvise, besides, you said I should help him harness the fox's power, Jiraiya reminded, Naruto and Leviathan raising eyebrows non-existent in leviathan's case at the comment i didn't say anything about trying to teach him that and how to summon at the same fucking time yubaka the sandiami roared in his student's face i don't care who it was you were wanting to peek on but the one thing i drilled into you when you were a greenhorn genin was not to let your peeking interfere with your ninja duties that includes your duties as a sensei time out time out naruto said holding up his arms in the shape of a T, old man, you wanted this guy to help me with the fox? He asked in surprise. Saru Tobi sighed as he retook his seat, Naruto, this is one of my former students, Jiraiya. And yes, I wanted him to help you with that because, everything else aside, he's the best sealing master in the entire village, if not the continent, the old ninja explained tiredly. Naruto, putting two and two together, made a noise of understanding and nodded. Leviathan looked between the three human with a blank look on his face. I feel like I'm missing something here. What's this about a fox? The serpent asked, scratching his head in confusion with his tail. Saru Tobi and Jiraiya blinked before looking to Naruto, who shrugged, he fell asleep right after he pummeled pervy sage, so I didn't have much time for a talk on my life story, Naruto explained. Jiraiya growling at that memory and nearly jumping out of his skin as Leviathan looked at him with his protective lenses removed, allowing unholy light to bath into the office, Sarutobi leaning back a little at the display. Keep it up, sicko, keep it up, the king of fishes said evenly as his eyelids slid back over his optical organs. For the last time, I'm not a pedophile, Jiraiya denied vehemently. Sue or you aren't, Leviathan said sarcastically. That part I'm still very skeptical about. Sarutobi said with a raised eyebrow, 
I've known Jiraiya for more decades than either of us would like to think about, and he's never shown any interest to that nature, or that gender for that matter, here is and pointed out. I didn't say anything about him being homosexual, Leviathan said bluntly. Huh? was the Sandiame's intelligent response, but that doesn't. He trailed off, pausing before his face went blank in realization. Sexy jutsu, he guessed, Naruto nodding in confirmation. You know it? Leviathan asked in surprise, looking between the two older males suspiciously. Don't tell him, he started, only for Naruto to clamp his mouth shut. Before you start accusing the closest thing I have to a grandfather of being something like that, I only used it on him to make him pass out and steal a scroll from his office, because I had been tricked into thinking it was a test to become a ninja. Naruto explained before releasing his grip on the maw and leaning back into his chair calmly, to the surprise of everyone in the office. Oh, well, that's okay then, Leviathan said causally with a shoulder-less shrug. What? Jiraiya asked in surprise, how is that fair? He's an old guy that probably hasn't been with a young, attractive woman since he was in his prime. I'm not going to blame him for passing out at the surprising sight of something he hasn't had in years. Besides, the kid was using it as a weapon in that case. You were just using it to get pictures of a naked blonde. And since, to my understanding, Naruto meant it to be himself as a girl, that means she's not legal, no matter how developed. QED, you're a pedophile for making him, her. Flash you in exchange for mediocre training, Leviathan reasoned calmly. Actually, since Naruto is a ninja, he is considered of legal age, Sarutobi corrected, though looking a bit annoyed with Jiraiya still, who just gapped as he tried to find his own hole in the logic. Really? Well, guess I can't fault you there. I remember a lot of old human villages that had the, not a man until you can hunt or kill, type traditions going for them. Leviathan conceded with a grumble, still, that doesn't excuse any of that. No, no it doesn't, here is an agreed with a scowl. Hey, wait, Naruto said in realization, you were supposed to help me with the fox's chakra, that means I didn't have to bribe you at all, you asshole, Naruto said accusingly. I was trying to make it seem less suspicious at first, Jiraiya defended. Fantastic job, Leviathan muttered, seriously though, what's this about a fox, he asked again. That's Naruto's story to tell, not mine, Sarutobi said after a moment's thought. Huh? Leviathan said looking between the eldest and youngest humans curiously, before humming to himself in thought and returning to Sarutobi's gaze, in that case, are we done here? Why were we here anyway? He asked with a grumble. Sarutobi said with a sigh, I originally had Naruto come here to ask you a few questions. Not surprised, Leviathan said, taking another long sip of coffee. Uza dude, buy this stuff by the barrel, please. The Sandiami cleared his throat at that, trying to bring this meeting back to its original purpose, actually, at first, I just wanted to ask Naruto about his unexpected summon, until he told me that you were still here. He also said yo jutsu and the like are. Not hearing a question in there, Leviathan pointed out evenly. I was wondering if you could tell me where you came from, and if you had any idea how Naruto accidentally brought you here. Sarutobi asked curiously. Hmm, I actually thought about that a bit when I was asleep. I either came from another time or another world altogether, he admitted calmly, however, I can probably rule out time altogether. How so? Seru Tobi asked with a raised eyebrow. I am immortal, Hokage. Among other things, if there were suddenly two of me, both versions would realize it fairly quickly, Leviathan reasoned, glaring down at the table, still, this being another world is disconcerting. I've been around since the dawn of time, so there being a place I'm not aware of is, Surprising, Leviathan added on with a look of interest and annoyance. The dawn of time? Sarutobi asked, a bit skeptical. Believe what you will. Fact remains that, like you, I haven't got an inkling of how I got caught in that summoning ritual, the serpent retorted uncaringly. Don't be concerned with me harming your village, elder. I don't get anything from being subtle. If death was my goal, I would have merely taken my full size and been done with it. Leviathan assured knowingly, smirking lightly, I'm just here to keep an eye on the kid that summoned me, and enjoy a small vacation in a new world. Naruto, do you believe Leviathan? Sarutobi asked curiously. Naruto blinked before grinning widely, yeah, I'd say he's telling the truth, he answered with a chuckle. What makes you so sure, brat? No offense, 
but you don't have the best track record on being a good judge of character? Jiraiya asked with a raised eyebrow. Leviathan tilted his head at that comment as Naruto looked sheepish, while that may be true, I don't think you can fake the level of frustration he's shown since I summoned him. You can fake politeness, hatred, and all the rest if you know how, but frustration at not being able to understand is hard to fake. And as the dead last, I know that feeling very well, he pointed out. You threw the dead last off a cliff because he had trouble learning a new trick? Where, exactly, did your brains go to die? Leviathan asked to Jiraiya, who glared weakly at the snake. My students' teaching skills aside, can I trust you not to harm anyone in this village? Sarutobi asked with a steely look in his eyes. You can trust me to help and protect Naruto, since he wants your job, I don't have any intent in being an enemy of his home. Leviathan answered evenly, and before you think of taking preemptive measures or some such shit, two words. Self-fulfilling prophecy, he added on bloodly. Where did that come from? Naruto asked blankly. I've been in a few situations like this before, sans the cross world teleporting, and it usually ends in me having to destroy a nice little town or village because assholes wouldn't leave me alone. And, as I said, I'm considering this a vacation and I really don't want to put up with such shit, Leviathan explained pointedly. You're very blunt, aren't you? Sarutobi asked with a sweat drop. Leviathan shrugged uncaringly, as I said, I get nothing from being subtle. There is absolutely nothing any of you have that I need, and I'm immortal so I can be patient for things I want. Now I'm imagining Orochimaru mellowing out if he got his immortality, Jiraiya muttered to himself. It is a disturbing image. Sarutobi agreed with a bit of mirth, now, as to Naruto's training. I'll cover it, Leviathan answered without pause. I thought you didn't know Jutsu? Sarutobi asked suspiciously. E.H., I'm not sure what the word jutsu refers to, but I know spells, rituals, and slews of other stuff that has been lost to time and history. I can probably teach the kid things you thought impossible, Leviathan answered indifferently. I've seen a lot of strange things in my long life, so there isn't much I won't believe possible. But I get your point, Sarutobi answered as he looked thoughtful. Technically, you're a summon, and there are no legal laws anywhere stating that summons can't remain with his or her summoner for an indefinite time. So, I won't take any action against you and no one else will have reason to, but do try not to harass the populace, Sarutobi requested. You humans are adaptable, so you'll get used to a talking, size-changing serpent in no time. Leviathan assured with an amused chuckle before he wrapped back around under Naruto's jumpsuit. Now come on, Zuma. I need more of that coffee shit, he urged onwards. Naruto looked to the Hokage, who chuckled and waved him on. All right, all right. See ya around, old man, and you. Stop making up nicknames for me and watch where your horns are, just because I. Heal fast doesn't mean I like getting stabbed in the back, he complained as he headed out the door. Aren't you taking that thing a bit lightly? Jiraiya asked, curious and a bit annoyed. Perhaps, but Naruto raises an interesting point. People trying to fool you into thinking they're your ally usually go for a calmer, more helpful persona. This Leviathan's annoyances and frustrations seem genuine. His apparent ignorance would also play against him, as he'd have to keep up the charade that he doesn't know such common things and keep track of what is taught to him. But that's too overly complicated and elaborate for a simple ruse. More likely, the fox's chakra just randomly summoned a great creature. But since Leviathan isn't part of a summon contact, it might have been a one-way thing, Sarutobi deduced. True, but that just means we might be stuck with something that could be as powerful as Kayubi, Jiraiya pointed out. Exactly. Huh? Jiraiya asked in surprise, seeing his sensei smirking at him lightly. Leviathan is an unknown entity. And it's always best to make unknowns into your allies, even if they turn out to be mediocre, lest they turn into powerful enemies, Sarutobi said sagely. Jiraiya smiled, proud to be this man's student, until the old man turned to glare at the toad sage. Now, I think we need to have a serious discussion on acceptable teaching methods, among other things. Jiraiya suddenly felt like he was that same, stupid genin from decades long past. Meanwhile, hey, Naruto, there's our best customer, Ayame greeted with a smile. I was beginning to think you were cheating on me with another ramen stand, she joked teasingly faking a pout since there was no one else in the ramen bar. Nah, never, 
You guys make the greatest ramen in the village, if not the whole land of fire. Naruto said in praise, taking a seat on a stool. Hey, um, Ayame. You guys have coffee? He asked curiously. Coffee? She asked in surprise before smiling. Well, look who's growing up. She teased again as she headed into the back, bringing back a cup of it shortly. We usually don't serve it to customers, but dad keeps a pot ready in case we need something to keep us going on a long day, or keep up with you on one of your ramenathons, Ayame explained as she sat the cup down in front of Naruto, so, anything else to go with that? I'll take a bowl of pork ramen to start it off, he answered with a grin as she nodded and headed into the back, and I hate to burst your bubble, but the coffee isn't for me, he informed with a grin. Huh? You expecting someone, Na, Ru, too? Ayame asked, slowly at the end, as her eyes went wide and her face paled a bit. The reason being was seeing the long, blue-scaled, horned serpent that slither part of its body out from Naruto's collar, coming down to drink from the mug. Ah, this is good. Bit different from the other one I had. Huh, got to figure out my favorite way to make this stuff. I guess, Leviathan said curious before looking up at Ayame. Numbly holding Naruto's bowl still. Thank you, madam. I needed a cup of this, he said with a fanged, lipless grin. You never even tried it before today, and you had a cup not 20 minutes ago, Naruto said with an even stare. Sumi, I'm an ad retorted shamelessly. Ayame blinked, coming back to her senses, as she watched the pair a few seconds more. Um, Naruto. Who, and what, is that? She asked in shock and a good deal of fear. This is Leviathan. Yeah, long story short. I got some guy to try and teach me how to summon something, but something went wrong and I got Leviathan here instead. As for what he is, I'm not sure exactly. Some kind of sea dragon, I guess, Naruto suggested, looking at the serpent, who was face first in his caffeinated beverage. Pulling himself out of the drink, he sighed indifferently, E.H., yeah, I guess that's good enough, he mused, raising an eyebrow at Ayame, you going to spoon feed the kid or something? Leviathan asked nodding to the bowl still in her hands. She looked at the bowl herself before turning sheepish, sorry, got a little caught up in the surprise, she apologized as she gave Naruto his pork ramen, who took it with a thank you and quickly dug in. You'd think he was starving, Leviathan commented to himself, watching Naruto devour the bowl. So, what were you trying to summon anyway? Ayame asked curiously. Toads, Naruto and Leviathan answered bluntly. Why? Ayame asked curiously. Don't ask, just, don't, you'll get him ranting, Naruto said with a sigh. Leviathan didn't even argue with that, just kept sipping his coffee. The ramen chef shrugged, turning her attention back to the strange creature, still, except for the horns, you don't look much like a dragon, Ayame said curiously. Leviathan, as if to prove a point, snorted flames out of his nose, making Ayame step back in surprise with a yelp. I said it was a good enough comparison, not that it was completely accurate, Leviathan said simply. Plus, he was a lot bigger than this when I summoned him, Naruto pointed out, cleaning out his bowl at this point. He, he was? Ayame asked with a gulp. Yeah, his head was at least as wide as the village gates and long as fuck. Actually, I take that back he's still long as fuck, Naruto joked with a grin. That's what she said, Leviathan quipped with a smirk, getting a confused look from Naruto. Never mind. Still, I'm just glad Uzu here explained what was wrong with my voice, he mused idly. Huh? What do you mean? Ayame asked in confusion. Well, everything sounds the same to me no matter how big or small I am, even my own voice. A good trick I learned to do with my eardrums, he explained, pausing to take a drink of coffee. Anyway, I rarely shrink down to this size and even rarer did I talk to people at all. So, I was unaware that my voice gets very high and squeaky if I don't use some of my, I guess you'd say chakra, to enhance it back to normal, Leviathan explained in annoyance. Seriously? Ayame asked, not sure what was so odd about that really, just wasn't a topic she was expecting. Yes, yes I am, Leviathan said, his voice now what Naruto called his, chipmunk voice. This caused Naruto to snort noodles through his nose as Ayame slowly brought her hands to her mouth trying not to laugh, yeah, ha ha ha, get it out of your system, he said, waving his tail at her, as if to give her permission, whether it was the permission or just hearing the voice again, Ayame busted out, 
laughing, falling to the floor as she held her sides when she wasn't pounding on the floor. I will burn this place to the ground if this goes on for too long. Leviathan informed blankly as Naruto cleaned his food out of his nostrils. Do that and I'll never let you have coffee again, Naruto countered with a smirk. Okay, okay, I'm done, I'm done, she promised, a few giggles escaping her mouth as she settled down. Leviathan just rolled his eyes before moving on, now before I start teaching you anything, we need to spend the next day or two on something important, he instructed solemnly. Huh? What's that? Naruto asked curiously, Ayame leaning in curiously. You need to explain to me what the hell you're training for, Leviathan answered bluntly, because I just realized, that between everything else you told me, you never told me what you were training for in the first place, he pointed out. Huh, now that you mention it, I guess I didn't, Naruto realized. With a shrug, I'll give you a rundown of how things are around here, but, I may not be the best teacher, being the dead last. Yeah, I'll take your examination over someone quoting textbooks, Leviathan said with a snort, smoke pluming from his nose. How comes? I know history is boring and all, Naruto started. Exactly. His story, Leviathan interrupted, trust me, I've lived long enough to know that the stuff that gets written down is rarely what actually happened, he pointed out. You have no idea, Naruto muttered without realizing it. Leviathan raised an eyebrow, especially when he saw the sad, sympathetic smile Ayame gave Naruto. I get the feeling this has something to with this fox that the old guys mentioned back there, Leviathan thought suspiciously, which is probably related to how I got here. Just what is your story, Naruto? He wondered curiously as he finished his coffee, I'm seriously going to swim in this stuff one day, he commented whimsically, getting sweat drops from the two humans. You sure do have interesting friends, Naruto, Ayame said with an awkward smile, Naruto returned it with a sheepish one of his own. Naruto and Leviathan sat in the former's bedroom and stared at each other for a long, long moment of uncomfortable silence. You have a fox, in your stomach, Leviathan asked slowly. Demon fox, but, yeah, pretty much, Naruto answered with a shrug. Leviathan stared a moment longer before lifting Naruto's shirt with his tail. What the fuck are you doing? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow as Leviathan put his ear hole against the blonde's gut. Hilu, foxy. You hear me? Leviathan yelled, patting the abdomen with his tail. Stop that! Naruto yelled in embarrassment, pushing the scaly creature off with one hand, it doesn't work like that. There's a seal, see? Naruto said, channeling chakra to reveal the swirling lines that made the seal. Leviathan tilted his head as he examined the markings, his tongue briefly flickering out, hmm, smells a bit like Azrael, he commented curiously. As who now? Naruto asked in confusion. Azrael, the angel of death, Leviathan answered evenly. Oh, what's an angel? Naruto asked curiously, making Leviathan face fault. Never mind, he's no one of importance here, Leviathan said. With a sigh, looking at the seal still, before putting his head against it again, Foxy, can you hear me now? He called, patting the stomach again. Naruto groaned at that as he massaged his eyes, I told you it doesn't, he said, pausing he pulled away his hand, and found himself in a sewer, a familiar sewer. A sewer that currently had a much larger sized leviathan coiled before the giant cage with the enormous fox behind it. Said serpent's seemingly never-ending tail ran out of the area and deeper into the mindscape. The two titans stared at one another through cage bars with wide eyes, neither seeming to know what to say at the moment. Well, this is awkward, Naruto noted to himself. So, you're this nine-tailed fox then, Leviathan mused, eyeing the many appendages. Yes, that would be me, Kayubi answered, legitimately not sure what to say. Those tails must make going to the bathroom a bit hard, Leviathan commented offhandedly, I mean, getting caught in all that fur and everything. Naruto just found another reason to like Leviathan, he made the Kayubi no kitsune sputter in disbelief. So, what? Did you grow those things over time or something? Leviathan asked conversationally. I was born with these, Kayubi answered with a glare. Really? Wow, that must have been weird for your mother to push out. Must have been like giving birth to a bunch of worms or adult snakes. Leviathan mused with a small shudder. Like you? Kayubi asked blankly, trying to get one up on this creature. 
You realize you're implying I banged your M. Leviathan asked with a raised, non existent eyebrow. Damn it, I don't have a mother, Kayubi yelled in frustration. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were raised by a homosexual couple. Not that I have anything against it, as long as I'm not involved, Leviathan assured with a smile. Naruto, at this point, was holding his mouth and gut as he tried not to laugh. Stop laughing, brat, Kayubi snapped, his fur hiding his blush. I can't help it, Naruto said in between snickers. What, did I go chipmunk again? Leviathan asked curiously, looking between the two in confusion. Kayubi rubbed a hand over its face. What do you even want, serpent? He asked with a growl, trying to regain his dignity. Finally, someone that doesn't call me a snake, Leviathan said with a smile, holding his head a bit higher, as for me. I just wanted to see if this fox in the gut thing was true. Admittedly, I've heard weird things before, but, a fox I might not be able to eat for breakfast fitting inside a human isn't one of them, he explained, stroking his chin with his belly, as his tail was stuck elsewhere, though, most of our ceiling was just on disembodied spirits. I'm a solid mass of pure chakra, Kayubi pointed out bluntly as Leviathan blinked. Seriously? Leviathan asked in minor surprise. What weird ass rules of magic does this world follow? He grumbled to himself. What's weird about that? Naruto asked curiously. I really want to blame you for this, but I know I can't, Kurama said with a sigh as he turned away to ignore the serpent and save just a little dignity. In my world, it's very much impossible for a being to be made of just magic, no matter how much. They need something to use as a body or keep them grounded to the mortal world. Leviathan explained as he looked down towards Naruto. Also, why is this place a leaky sewer? He asked curiously. It's a reflection of his mind, Kurama yelled over his shoulder. The scaly giant blinked or would have at least, as he took that one in, Dear Yahweh, you need help, kid, Leviathan said in concern. Duh, that's what training is for, Naruto countered, as if it were obvious. Not that kind of help, Leviathan murmured with a head shake, it was nice meeting you, Foxy. We'll have to talk sometime about ways to train this kid, he said with a reptilian smile. Just, just get out, Kayubi said with a sigh of resignation and a hand wave. A moment later, Naruto found himself back in his room with Leviathan in his lap, hum, pleasant fellow, Leviathan commented. He nearly destroyed the village 13 years ago, Naruto retorted blankly. Really? Leviathan asked curiously, tilting his head, why? Huh? Naruto said in confusion, because he's a demon? He suggested slowly. A number he's not. Be I'm not even sure it's a he. See even if he is, that doesn't answer my question. Leviathan listed off. Naruto cupped his chin, mulling it over. A what is he then? B what do you mean by that? C same as B, Naruto replied curiously. A don't know, but I've met demons. He might be a spirit or demigod. Be well, if he's a mass of chakra, as you call it, then. He's likely either genderless or can change genders. Sea demons are malicious, but they still have a rhyme and reason to their madness, Leviathan explained patiently. Naruto hummed to himself, okay, dropping the list, I have no idea then. All records say he just appeared, Naruto answered, trailing off as something nagged at him. Like someone summoned him? Like you did me? Leviathan finished the thought, stroking his chin with his tail, hmm. More's going on here than even you seem to know, kid, Leviathan noted. For once, that doesn't feel like an insult, Naruto said with a sigh, still, mysteries can wait. You got any plans for training me? He asked, just a bit impatiently. Well, you already explained this Chunin exam thing. Barbaric but effective, I suppose, Leviathan commented, slithering out to the kitchen table and taking a sip of his coffee, grimacing a bit, too cold, he murmured lifting it up to snort a patch of flames on the underside as Naruto took a seat at the table, ah, just right. Still better fresh though, he mused as the rest of his body kept crawling in, so, who exactly are you up against? An asshole named Neji Hayuga, Naruto answered with a frown. Hayuga? That sounds almost like hug ga, Leviathan mused to himself, so, what did he do to get under your skin? Naruto sighed, it's complicated, he's got a stick up his ass, he preaches about fate and destiny, and he almost killed Hinata, Naruto answered, rubbing a hand though his hair. Who? Leviathan asked idly as he took another drink. 
Hinata Hayuga, his cousin, Naruto answered, fighting off a smirk at Leviathan's spit take. The sea serpent stared at Naruto for a long moment before taking a deep breath. Do I even want to know? He asked flatly. I'd tell you if I could. All I know is they're part of the same clan and something went on between the two parts. Naruto answered with a sigh. Two parts? Leviathan asked, raising an eyebrow he didn't have. I don't know the details, just that there is a head family and a branch family. Neji's in the branch. Hinata's in the head family, Naruto supplied with a shrug. Leviathan shook his head, that just screams bad business to me, but I'm just going to respect your desire to kick his ass. Wait, is Hinata your girlfriend or something? He asked curiously. E.H. No, she's just a girl from my class. I just didn't like the way he talked down to her, Naruto said with a sigh, reminded me of what a lot of people used to say about me. Ah, venting your issues on an appropriate target. Good, better than blaming everyone and everything, Leviathan acknowledged with a nod, so, back to the point. What's this Niji guy able to do? Leviathan asked curiously. You ever hear of something like a chakra network, or magic network I guess, in your case? Naruto asked, thinking about how to explain this. You mean ley lines or do you mean magic flowing through your body? The great beast inquired. Either way, I've heard of both. Body, Naruto clarified. Anyway, the Hyuga apparently have this bloodline, an ability only a Hyuga has. It's called the Byakugan, an eye power that basically lets them see the chakra network. They have a jutsu or combat style designed to block chakra, don't they? Leviathan guessed with an eye roll, getting a curious look. Humans in my world had similar things. Naruto sighed and nodded, yeah, they can basically have their hands use their chakra to stab at your insides or block your chakra, Naruto answered. That all he can do? Leviathan asked, almost sounding surprised. All I saw, at least, Naruto answered before looking thoughtful, oh, and apparently the Byakugan can see in near 360 degrees. He added on as Leviathan reeled back in slight surprise. Kid, that's a bit of big detail to throw in at the end, Leviathan pointed out, looking confused, how the shoal does that even work? I get the selective x-ray type vision thing, but seeing in all angles? Do the eyes fucking turn around into his skull or something? Naruto shrugged, hey, I don't understand this bloodline stuff either. My teammate has one but he could only got it after he nearly died. Okay, that makes sense. The mind and body will pull out every trick to stay alive. Leviathan admitted curiously, okay, so we have to defend you against someone that can strike with magic to screw with your insides. Luckily, his style seems to sound more about making you useless in a fight by fucking up your chakra rather than just bursting your eternal organs. Whether that's a style choice or if it's technically more difficult going that extra step in lethality is hard to do say. And the owl vision thing? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Leviathan shrugged. Just because you see it coming doesn't mean you can stop it, he pointed out, we'll worry about that after we can either get you close or find something to use at a distance. Any ideas then? Naruto asked and scowled to himself, how long do you have again? Little under a month, why? Naruto asked curiously. Okay, kid, you might not like this, but I need some time, a week at most, Leviathan answered with a determined tone. A week? What for? Naruto all but whined. I need to make sure I have the right, feel, I suppose, for how your chakra works compared to magic. I need to see and experience it a bit before I can figure this out, he explained before smirking, after that, who knows, I might be able to teach you to throw lightning. Naruto grinned at that, okay, a week sucks, but if we're talking stuff like that, it'd be worth it, he agreed. Don't sell me short, Uzu. A week at most is what I said. I might only need today and tomorrow. That said, we can still do some training, Leviathan assured with a grin, now, let's head someplace to train, and pick me up some more damn coffee, Leviathan snapped, glaring at his empty cup as if it paid him great offense. Naruto shook his head in amusement at that, holding out his arm for Leviathan to crawl up his sleeve, how do you keep your horns from fucking up my clothes, he asked curiously. Magic coating over the sharp bits, Leviathan answered nonchalantly, I'm really going to enjoy it when I don't have to hide in your shirt anymore. Time skip anyone that knew Sakura and Ino could tell there was something different about them, besides the shorter hair. There was a certain 
spark in their eyes, an acknowledgement that they had to improve themselves. Acknowledging a problem was the first step. Figuring out how to go about fixing it was another. I get the feeling we should probably wait until after the exams, Eno said with a sigh as they walked through the village. What with the finals coming up, everyone is either busy getting ready or helping others get ready, she pointed out. True, unfortunately. Besides, I'm not even sure where to start. Sakura agreed, looking up at the sky, good use all my brains are. Oh don't be like that. We hit a snag in life, it happens, Eno said reassuringly, still, we should probably train all the same. No need to let what we have get rusty, Eno recommended with a grin. Hence why you started leading us to the training grounds, Sakura said knowingly as she looked around the area of trees around them, pausing for a moment, though, it sounds like it's already occupied, she pointed out as Eno strained her ears little, hearing the sounds of someone yelling. Hey, isn't that Naruto's voice? Ino asked as they drew closer to the field. Naruto, Sakura repeated curiously, I thought he'd be off nagging Kakashi sensei for training. I wonder what he's doing here. Oh wow wow wow. Fuck that burns, Naruto's voice yelled with a hiss of pain. I told you, it starts burning in three seconds of contact. It takes you one second to finish catching it and nearly another to throw it back and that's if you don't waste time, another voice reminded, almost smugly. Is that Kakashi? Ino asked curiously, having never heard the copycat's voice herself. No, that's definitely not him, Sakura answered with a scrunched brow. Guess Naruto got another teacher or sparring partner, Ino mused. Maybe, Sakura answered as they came around the corner of a patch of trees. Hey, Naruto, wh holy shit. Sakura yelled in shock, both Kunoichi reeling back in shock at the sight. There was a blue snake as thick as an anaconda with horns on its head and an impossible long body. Even coiled up into a pile bigger than Konohamaru and wider than an Akamichi, its tail still went out. Into the tree lining and out of sight. While alarming, that wasn't the full picture. Naruto was standing not too far from the massive reptile, his black shirt visible with the top of his orange jumpsuit tied around his waist. Currently, he was holding his hands in pain, glaring at the serpent. Said scaly beast was currently rolling a wave back and forth through a portion of its body, balancing and bouncing a large ball of bright red and yellow light. Why doesn't it hurt you then? Naruto asked in annoyance. Leviathan rose an eyebrow, snorting flames out of its nose in annoyance. Right, stupid question. Naruto admitted with a sigh. M maybe we should come back another time. Sakura commented nervously, looking over to Ino, who was long gone. Oh, real nice, Ino. Way to watch out for a friend. She hissed in annoyance before sighing. Um, Naruto? Sakura called slowly. The blonde blinked as he turned to face the voice. Sakura, he greeted with a wave, getting a smile of relief from her. Glad to know that the snake thing was not an immediate threat. Hmm, friend of yours? Leviathan asked curiously. Yeah, she's my teammate, Naruto answered with grin. Oh, make another smoke clone so you can introduce me then, Leviathan asked. What, no break? Naruto asked, getting a smirk, fine, and they're shadow clones, not smoke clones. Naruto said in annoyance as he summoned up another clone. And yet, it poofs into smoke when destroyed. Leviathan commented with an eye roll as his head and neck slithered towards a slightly alarmed Sakura with the clone approaching as well. In the same instant, his body hurled the orb of heat at the reel. Naruto, who barely caught it with both hands and hurled it back at the pile of scales and muscle. The clone quirked an eyebrow at the head of the beast. How the hell can you do all of that without looking? He asked curiously. Leviathan smiled proudly. I can use my magic to give me a constant awareness of things going on around my body. Took me a long time to get that right. Leviathan answered as they reached Sakura, prompting Leviathan to curl upwards as to be about waist level with everyone better than everyone looking at the ground whenever they spoke to you. Um, Naruto. Who, what is this? Sakura asked slowly, pointing at the horned serpent. The clone grinned, Leviathan, this is my teammate, Sakura Haruno. Sakura, this is a, friend of mine, Leviathan, Naruto answered. Nice to meet you, Leviathan greeted with a tip of his head, I'd shake your hand, but my tail is a bit preoccupied with an army of his clones, Leviathan added in with a grin. Um, nice to meet you, Leviathan, Sakura said awkwardly, what exactly? 
sea serpent, kind of like a dragon, don't call him a snake, Naruto summarized bluntly. Okay, Sakura acknowledged, talking serpent. So, what, did you make a summoning contract Naruto? She asked curiously. Kind of, Naruto said sheepishly, scratching his head. Sakura sighed, hands on her hips, Naruto Uzumaki, what did you do? She scolded lightly. Nothing, I, just tried to summon a giant toad and I got him. Instead, Naruto answered, embarrassed under her scolding gaze. Not to sound arrogant, but I still think you got a better deal. Leviathan grumbled. Sakura sighed in exasperation, typical Naruto, always getting into trouble and screwing things up. In his defense, Leviathan spoke up before Naruto could, I blame his teacher, he informed. Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked in surprise. Hold that thought, Leviathan said pleasantly, his body shooting up in front of Sakura, who jumped back in shock. The Naruto clone blinked before going poof as the ball of heat and light shot through him and stopped in midair, right in front of Leviathan's head. Sorry, my bad, Naruto called apologetically. No, no, that one was on me, Leviathan assured, tossing the ball back to his midsection, which shot it back at Naruto, so, where were we? He asked, turning back to the pinkhead. Um, Kakashi sensei, silver hair, one eye? Sakura answered. It was strange, talking to this creature. But he was just so normal, if blunt, with how he talked that it became easier and easier to just talk. Never heard of him. The kid called this guy pervy sage, Leviathan informed, making a mental note to watch out for Cyclops with silver hair. Yep, that sounds like Naruto, Sakura said with a look of fondness and annoyance. So, you're training him now? She asked curiously. Leviathan shrugged in Sakura's mind elder less feet. I'm currently trying to figure out how your chakra works as opposed to the magic I know. Magic? Sakura inquired with a raised eyebrow. Long story, but I am training him at the same time that I'm studying chakra, Leviathan admitted. Oh, how so? Sakura asked with a head tilt. Well, by making him interact with that orb of heat, I can sense how his chakra reacts to it and build up my understanding of it. But I can tell from a mile away he has piss poor control over his chakra. So this is going to teach him a form of control that might be better for him, not to mention it's good exercise. Leviathan explained. Sense it? Like the Byakugan or Sharingan? Sakura asked curiously. Not exactly. It's more like my five senses can detect magic, or chakra, to varying degrees. They tell me more than just eyesight would, Leviathan elaborated. Smell and taste chakra? That must be, interesting, Sakura mused. Not having another word for it, and the clones? Sakura asked, looking off to where Leviathan's tail went. E.H., they're coming at my tail tip one at a time. I figure with the way smoke clones work. The clones will pick up the mistakes and improvements as each one pops, thus making each one better until the kid can fight with. Well, I don't know the best in this world, so I can't really compare, Leviathan explained offhandedly. That's actually not a bad idea, since Naruto has so much chakra, Sakura admitted, ignoring the, this world, comment for now, but, why are you helping him? She asked curiously, is it because he summoned you? Nah, not really. I just like the kid. Besides, he needs someone watching his back, especially with old men making him use that sexy jutsu as payment for training, Leviathan answered bluntly. Yeah, he do wait, what? Sakura asked in alarm, grabbing Leviathan by the neck. Levi, tell me my idiot of a teammate wasn't molested, she yelled in anger and worry. Leviathan blinked awkwardly at that, Uzu says he wasn't, he trailed off with a small hint of doubt and concern. Sakura released the fanged serpent with a sigh of relief. Great, now I'm feeling protective of the idiot, she said in mock exasperation. Is that such a bad thing? Leviathan asked with a head tilt. I guess not, Sakura said with a sigh, you're pretty friendly for a sea serpent. Leviathan shrugged, honestly, I could have torn into you 20 different ways, but you not only look like someone that needed a good kick in the ass, you look like you got it and are still getting over it. So, you get a pass for now, he explained. Sakura pulled off a Naruto and looked very sheepish, yeah, I kind of did, she admitted, remembering her lackluster double knockout with Eno. Good, Leviathan said with a smile at her surprised face, we all need at least one of those in our lives. 
Best to get it out of the way early, he explained sagely. Thanks, I think, Sakura said with a small smile, so, what did you mean, tear into me? She asked, morbidly curious. Seriously? Leviathan asked evenly, sighing in disappointment. Okay, since you asked, your free pass is revoked. I managed to get a few things out of Naruto about you. They sum up to you being a beautiful bookworm, he started off. Naruto said that. Sakura asked in surprise. The bookworm is what I got out of that. Leviathan explained, finding it amusing that Sakura looked a bit proud of that, however, you're also a bookworm who thought she could get by on theory alone and you might be giving Uzu brain damage with how violently you reject him, which is a bit hypocritical of you, in my opinion, since I hear your own crush does the same to you, so you should at least have the decency to turn the kid down gently instead of bashing his head in. Leviathan started off evenly. Hey, Sakura complained with a scowl. I'm not done. From what I hear, you also broke up your friendship over a boy that, unless Zuma is exaggerating a lot, isn't interested in girls yet, Leviathan continued. Sasuke isn't gay, Sakura defended with an eye roll. Huh? Oh, no, I just meant his testicles haven't really dropped yet in general, as in he's asexual, Leviathan corrected before going right back to his rant. I can also tell just by looking at you that you've been focusing a lot on your looks. Not a bad thing in itself even in your line of work. Unfortunately, unless you have a bloodline or some other ability, you haven't put a lot of extra work into your training, Leviathan theorized, seeing. Sakura look a bit shamed, knowing he was right on the mark, meaning you came into this with some fantasy dream, probably a romantic one. Okay, okay, I get it, Sakura said with a sigh. Yes, a good kick in the ass does that, Leviathan acknowledged with a smirk. Now I just feel depressed, Sakura said with a slump. I'd pat you on the back, but again, occupied, Leviathan reminded. Hey, Leviathan, Sakura called curiously, perking up a bit. If I help explain chakra to you, could you, I don't know, train me some too? She requested hopefully. Leviathan blinked before grinning a lipless and toothy grin, and here I was afraid you'd be a hopeless banshee of a fangirl, Leviathan commented happily. Sure. I can pass some things your way. I'll even explain how I got here and everything to pass the time. Sakura smiled in relief as she sat down next to Leviathan to watch Naruto train for a moment as he hurriedly kept throwing the hot ball back before it burned him. There is one thing you should learn from Uzu over there. Leviathan added in out of the blue. Huh? What's that? Sakura asked, less skeptical than she would have been earlier. He pines after you and he still tries to train like crazy. Leviathan pointed out. Ah, fuck, now I feel like a dumbass, Sakura said with a face palm. Admitting the problem is the first step, Leviathan commented cheekily. I want to hit you, but your horns would stab me, Sakura muttered in annoyance, rolling her eyes at the serpents chuckling. So, you really have total awareness around your entire body? Sakura asked curiously, and wanting to change the subject. Oh, fuck no, limiting it is what took so long to figure out. Leviathan said with a shiver, trust me, being aware of every little bug, rock, and plant, not fun. Quick way to get headaches. It's worse in the ocean though. Makes me want to curl up in a barrel of coffee just thinking about it. Coffee, Sakura repeated with a sweat drop. Never mind that. Just start explaining this chakra shit so I can teach him and then you to kick ass. Leviathan instructed. Why am I second? Sakura asked, mostly jokingly because he probably won't die if I fuck this up, Leviathan answered flatly. Okay, point taken. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.